okay good morning good afternoon and good evening uh depending on when you listen to this voice um uh, slide presentation okay so my name is victor and i'm going to be your anchor for this training uh we've looked at quite a number of the modules uh this is the cisco cyber ops training it's a 28 module series and we are right now in module 24 technologies and protocol this is a very swift a very short module here we want to understand what are the technologies and protocols that we need to check out for what should we be monitoring if you're running wireshark if you're running any software if you're running any tool as a SOC analyst tier one tier two what should you be looking out for explain the behavior of common network protocols in the context of security monitoring because the point there is that if you get to work in an organization that is actually uh, managing security for maybe other companies organizations mdas that is ministry department agencies of government you will get to use one tool or the other irrespective of the tool irrespective of the software that you're going to be using some things uh, should be common knowledge for you all of those protocols all of those major technologies you should be aware of them then how security technologies affect the ability to monitor common network protocols protocols like NAT, dhcp uh, udp arp protocols that drive your network what should you be looking out for HD, HTTPS what should you be looking out for in terms of monitoring your network monitoring common protocols so the first one is syslog and NTP before now we understand that NTP has to do with network time protocol that's what keep uh, track of and sync most devices on a particular network so many devices depending on the type different vendors they're going to use a kind of a login entry right all the on their server or on the web application or whatever understand that it listings at port 514 so if you're using any particular tool if you want to check out for log files you could filter by that particular port number a same thing for ntp of course we understand that ntp has to do with time so What's the port number for NTP? One, two, three. If you're going to be able to keep track of events, you'll be able to keep track of what has happened on your and most servers and most PCs, most routers and switches, you're going to have dates being set. So you could set your date, you could set your time. It's going to help you so that when you have logs, when you have attacks, you could do either forensic or you can go back in time to be able to see what happened at what particular time. DNS. So for every server, for instance, SouthTechVentures.com, CNN.com, Ajazira.com, um, Fox News or Fox.com, whichever website you have, it's going to run on a server. A simple way you could check out for DNS server is doing is basic who is lookup. Oh, run netcraft. Netcraft is a is a is an extension. I think you have it on Firefox. You also have it on Chrome. So once you run uh, any of these tool, even if you ping, rather you do trees. Um, okay, so when you ping, if you ping IP address, you ping the IP address, it's going to get you the name server or the domain name server of that particular uh, website or that particular network. DNS is now used by many types of malware. So, varieties of malware use DNS to communicate with command and control servers that to infiltrate data in traffic disguised as normal DS queries so a DNS lookup for long strange of exfiltrated data.example.com will be forwarded to the name server of this 
which will record long stretch of this and apply back to the model with a coded response. This use of the DNA subdomain name is shown in the figure. The expected data is the encoded text shown in the box. The threat actor collects the encoded data, decodes and combines it, and now has access to an entire data file. So you have something like this. Ordinarily, this is the legitimate domain. So this is what the attacker is using. And I still want to point out most of these attacks, servers with good, um, most servers will not allow this. That is just a simple plain truth. Except you have a server domicile in a very, very work hosting company. That's why some of these attacks are going to be possible, right? Most servers these days, for instance, we've been hosting website for the past 10 years, since 2010. So we understand how some of these attacks work, and except you're in a very, very highly compromised DNS server, that's when this is going to be successful. So, but these are the kind of things you want to watch out for. Let me get my documented ship. Okay, so, that's that for DNS. So you want to make sure that your 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 servers are well patched to mitigate uh, uh, against most of these abuse. So you can be using a physical server on your PC, and of course it's going to run through. It's going to run via the most common servers like Ninja, like IS, and Apache. So you want to check the version of your server. And make sure you patch it against most of these vulnerabilities http and https like we've said http does not protect data from alteration so you have a pca you have a server if i call it the p So we're saying that this data, yeah, yeah, PC. We're saying that this data that you have transmitted from from point A to point B, right? If you don't want sniffing to occur, if you don't want data to be stolen, if you want the if you don't want the data to be hijacked, you want to make sure that you use it, it protocol that is not plain text. So. If you have a guy here, that's what you refer to as uh, a man in the middle attack. He's sniffing to like Wireshark and the others. We're able to sniff and see um, information you have. Um, how do I get this thing to? Just write. So you don't want communication between a PC and a server to be in plain text, right? So that's what HTTP does. So you want to avoid plain text calls. FTP, HTTP, TFTP. FTP, SMTP, uh, what else again? So several of them. So you have several plain text protocols. Rather, you want to use the second version of most of these protocols. SFTP, HTTPS, same SFTP or SSH. Then you want to use IMAP if you're going to be using this or use a TLS implemented on your mail server. So all browsing activity should be considered to be a risk. I've implemented as simple as you can have a browser uh, trying to pass information over FTP, Wireshark and most different tools are going to capture it. So you want to avoid that. HTTP does not protect the data. So if you are passing information from here to here, if you log in data and whatever is going to be captured. But if it is uh, encrypted, if you use HTTPS, of course, that data is going to be in scrambled text. So it will take a whole lot to try to reconstruct and get what the plain text message is. And of course, we know that password salting, password hashing, like we talked about in cryptography, 
are all countermeasures for even people trying to sniff through HTTPS data. Okay, so this is just an explanation. Yes, explanation. Uh, all of the things I've been talking about, point A to point B. So you want to make sure that you're using a secure protocol. Email, for instance. IMAP and POP3 are used to download email messages from a mail server. SMTP sends data from a host to a mail server and between mail servers. So this is a protocol you want to be looking out for during your monitoring. ICMP. People are going to be able to identify your host by running simple ping, right? Ping, reset, reshoot, or trisat, depending whichever one. Um, DNS lookup. So these are um, attacker can run uh, below a network um, recon uh, commands. We are CLI recon commands. We are CLI. Uh, so if you run ping this, so it can run ping website name or IP address, trace out website name or web, website address, DNS lookup, website name or website address. What is it going to get? It's going to be able to identify hosts on the network, or he can use Nmap, TCP, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Nmap, which other software again? Um, several of them i prefer nmap and there are quite few that does exactly what nmap is going to do so because of the advantages of icmp internet control messaging protocol it bears itself to that vulnerability of helping attackers to run most of these commands or using the tool to do reconnaissance on our info of on our on our server because of the concern that icmp can be used to surveil or deny service from outside of the network. SMP traffic from inside the network is mine It's sometimes overlooked. Because the thing is that your attacker is going to find a way to come into your network. Once it's on your network, of course, it's going to be on your data. If it gets into the network, it's going to run all of these things and going to provide him basic information for him to start planning an attack. So in terms of monitoring, these are some of the things you want to check up and monitor security technologies acls so if you have router switches one of the things you want to do to provide security is to make sure that you implement access control so this is a very straightforward way to implement access control on a cisco uh, router this router one this is your internet so this is a pc this is a server so the question is what are you allowing into the server what are you disallowing into the server what are you permitting out so outbound inbound right so what are you allowing what are you disallowing so this is a basic command of how that has been run in the cisco uh routing and switching wireless and social training this too this acl is a module on its own so you have two modules covered. So before here, you just need to understand that one of the things you should work out for in terms of technology is ACL. This can easily be configured, right? But you should watch out for it to stay secured. Okay, NAT and PAT. So network address translation, we've looked at this before, and port address translation. We say if you use a tool like uh, we use a tool like TCP view in sys internal right download sys internal run this tool start working on your system browsing you're going to see follow the websites you're visiting it will tell you at what port for instance that you're connecting to the port of that particular web server where you're accessing that website from. So it's going to give you your inside local, outside local, inside global, and of course, outside global. You see four items, two ports, port of your system, port of the system or the server where that website you're visiting is on. Then 
your own IP address. I don't mean your local IP address. I mean your public IP address, and of course the public address of where that particular system is sitting on. We've talked about encryption, encapsulation, and tunneling. So understand that security technologies involve you involves you implementing VPN. Few things you want to implement access control is you want to implement VPN. These are two technologies that helps make your system secured. What it does is that it provides encryption between two points within a network or within a geographical location. So you can have branch A, you can have branch B. So for those two pieces to communicate over a secure network, you can introduce VPN. Like I said in the other modules, you get a VPN router at point A, VPN router at point B, then you follow through the instructions and configure both of them so that whatever correspondence between point A and B is over a tunnel, a secure tunnel. So pair to pair networking and tour, right? Uh, Everybody wants to do pair to pair, right? Bitcoin is a P2P operation and BitTorrent is a P2P file sharing uh, network. B2B, uh, point, uh, Bitcoin is gaining so much ground, uh, BitTorrent has been around for quite some while. File sharing P2P activity should not be allowed on the corporate network. P2P activity can avoid firewall protection and is a common vector for the spread of malware. Yes, you go to. Uh, you use a tool like uTorrent, you use a P2P payment application because people are going to be sharing files, especially for file sharing. Uh, payment might not be so much of an issue, um, but you see, um, file sharing, for instance, torrents, you're downloading torrents, files, movies, whatever. Most of those things are going to come. I just remember there was a certain time a new uh, movie was released. Everybody was talking about the movie, right? So a good number of persons would just say, okay, let me download this via torrent. You can download it via torrent. Imagine somebody downloading a movie for about 1.5 gig, an MP4 file. You can see the icon of a media player. Yes, yeah, this, this is a movie file. Upon opening it, you just get to understand that it's not a movie file. So you have steganography, you have files being hidden. Steganography, right? Hardened files can be clean. Can be clean just for passing messages, or it can be malicious. when file is open. This is one of the disadvantages of uh, having P2P uh, file sharing uh, stuff on your network. Okay. Uh, this is the technology how it works. Load balancing. Load balancing involves the distribution of traffic between device or network. If redundancy re resources exit, a low balancing algorithm or device will work to distribute traffic between those resources as shown in the figure. So it's one thing you want to implement on your network that to help you provide business continuity. So that's all for the technology and protocol. So these are things you should look out for in your, your within your workplace. Or if you're going to be consulting for uh, individuals for corporate organizations, these are solutions that you want to look at providing. Thank you very much and see you in the next uh, slide.